What's your memory like? I must admit mine's not too bad, especially my long-term memory. And um, I can still remember some things from primary school. And one of those things that I remember being actually taught by my teachers at, at primary school was this, this process uh, by which plants grow. And basically what happens is that plants take up water uh, through their roots and then they combine uh, water with CO2, carbon dioxide, which they absorb through their leaves through, I think it's called stomata. I think of that in A-level biology. So that's where the carbon dioxide goes into the leaf. And then the water and uh, the CO2 are then converted into carbohydrates using the energy of the sun. The plant uses the energy of the sun to convert the water and carbon dioxide uh, into into carbohydrates and that's what causes the plant to grow so um do you remember the name for that can you do you remember that do you remember being taught that i was is there anyone on this channel who wasn't taught about this process and um do you know what the name of it is i'm going to stop the video now and let's see if you can remember the name of it yeah, that's right. It's called photosynthesis. Yeah, photosynthesis. And this, this diagram um, shows how that process of photosynthesis works. I'll just show you that now so you can stop the video and study it for as however long you want to study it for. So it's important that, that plants grow um, because humans and animals eat plants and then um, in many cases for people like me uh, we also eat not just the plants but also the animals that feed off the plants so it's basically what um, it's probably the most important chemical reaction um, on the planet isn't it this this process this uh, process of photosynthesis without photosynthesis that there wouldn't be any life um, on earth so if you wanted um, life on Earth to flourish, you would need plenty of water and in particular plenty of CO2 and plenty of sunlight because the more of those things that we would have, the, the more photosynthesis that would occur and the more plant growth that we'd have. So, um, you know, human beings have, have understood this up until fairly recently. Human beings have understood this, this process of um, photosynthesis very well. So um, just as a, an aside here, so it's one that I have played on a few normies. You know, the ones that you encounter that believe in um, global climate warming, boiling change. Um, and, you know, they talk about how we must reduce um, CO2 and everything. Just to have a bit of a laugh at their expense, just ask them, do you know what percentage of the air that we breathe, you know, the air on the planet is made up of the gas called carbon dioxide. And um, in the past, I would actually tell the normie um, what the percentage is. Um, but these days, what I tend to do is say, um, well, why don't you Google it yourself when you get home um, and then tell me, tell me what you found out. And um, it's quite surprising, actually, um, for, for many normies, because they, they haven't got a clue about that. This is where they do have a gap in their knowledge. So, again, you can have a guess yourself now. Um, pause the video and then restart it in a second once you've actually, uh, you know, got an idea. So it's 0.03 of 1%, <laughs> which is quite low. So, you know, if you talk about, um, you know, the global climate boiling people, they talk about, I don't know, CO2 levels rising by by 20 percent or something. You know, that would, you know, it wouldn't even get to uh, be nowhere near even a tenth of one percent, you know. Uh, so it's um, it's, it's absolutely in, in, well, it's absolutely insanity, you know, to. Another giveaway is is this photograph that I'm going to uh, put up, and it's of a commercial greenhouse in Holland. And what you can see here is that um, commercial growers of uh, agricultural crops, they understand photosynthesis. So to accelerate plant growth, guess what they do inside a greenhouse? You know, bearing in mind that photosynthesis is driven by uh, water, CO2 and sunlight, UV radiation. 
Yep, that's right. To get crops to grow faster, they don't, they don't just need to be well watered, but they also pump this terrible gas called carbon dioxide into commercial greenhouses because the more CO2 that's in the atmosphere, the faster that plants can grow. Uh, and then also on top of that, you need to have um, a little bit more um, UV assistance. So they'll, you'll, they'll use lamps. Over here in Finland in the wintertime, um, when the sun just like hovers around on the horizon for like three or four hours a day, um, they still grow tomatoes here, but what they've got to do is to use um, UV lamps. So in summary so far then, what, what we've got is this, is that the more CO2 there is, the more sunlight there is, the more plant growth that we get and the more that life on earth will flourish. So it would be a bit odd then to, to learn that um, humanity is uh, through this thing called geoengineering is, is trying to um, reduce the level of CO2 in the atmosphere and to reduce um, the level of uh, UV radiation coming from the sun. Um, my question to you is what do you think that would do to plant growth and therefore to to life on earth would it would it flour, would life on earth flourish if if there was less co2 and less sunlight or would the opposite be the case now this geoengineering thing there'll be people that say oh that's just a conspiracy theory and my my response to that rather would be like fooey it's nonsense it's actually here in plain sight so some of you might have heard of the london school of economics They've actually got a page on their website. Um, I'll, I'll show this. Um, I'll show a couple of pages actually. And it's um, this page I'm going to show is uh, what is geoengineering and how could it tackle climate change? So it says, what is geoengineering? Why is it on the agenda and why is it controversial? So ge geoengineering, also known as climate engineering, describes a way, uh, a range of ways to intervene. Um, on a large scale in the Earth's natural systems, uh, the oceans, soils and atmosphere. Um, they mostly fall into two categories, those designed to remove CO2 from the air and those that try to limit the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface. So um, I'm going to show this the, the screenshot now of this, uh, this web page. So um, by all means stop the video and by doing that you can look at it for as long as you want. So obviously at the moment um, the main ways that they're trying to reduce the amount of CO2 um, in the atmosphere is to um, basically abolish the internal combustion engine um, and, and any other sort of industrial process that releases CO2 into the air. Um, the issue there, of course, is that um, it greatly impacts on our material quality of life. You know, the fact that people can't go on holiday anymore, they can't drive their car anymore, they can't have their central heating on anymore, they can't eat this, a wide uh, variety of foods. So this next page come, is also from the LSE's website. So they talk about um, solar radiation management. So this is no conspiracy theory. They're actually telling you that they're up to this stuff. So it says, uh, solar radiation management aims to bring down temperatures by reflecting a small amount of sunlight back into space to limit the amount that reaches the Earth's surface. Um, one, technique, one proposed technique is to inject minute particles of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. Uh, these particles, known as aerosols, would reflect some sunlight back into space, a process known as global dimming. They've not fessed up to actually doing this. They've just said that they have plans to do it. So um, quite interesting. Or whether actually they can, um, they've managed to put some sulfur dioxide into the, the plane fuel um, for regular passenger flights. But I'm sure they would never do that without asking, uh, telling us beforehand that that's what they were doing. I'm sure they would never tell us that. Um, the last thing that, that I want to say really is, um, you know, again, this uh, phenomena of predictive programming so um, as a kid I used to like the the original Star Trek movies you know with William Shatner, Shatner in it and um, they actually did uh, a full-length film I think it probably was maybe um, late 70s I think it was 1979 it was released 
And the main uh, plot is this, um, this alien. And basically she wants to eliminate uh, carbon units. And one of those carbon units, of course, is, is uh, human beings. Um, because um, the plot of the film is that, that the carbon units are not needed anymore um, because the, the, they've been replaced by computers and um, these carbon units um, um, are, are bad and they just need to be gotten rid of. So, you know, again, you've got this phrase, haven't you, um, about um, they, they, you are the carbon that they want to reduce or eliminate or whatever, and... Um, it's an unpalatable thought, but um, this is this is what's going on. I think um, what fascinates me is is the normie. You know, when when they get told about glo global climate warming change, global boiling, and all of that, have they actually forgotten what they were taught when they were in primary school about um, about photosynthesis? You know, like if you put more CO two into the atmosphere and you had more uh, sunlight, then you'd have more plant growth, wouldn't you? Um, and life would flourish. On the other hand, if you had less CO2 and diminish sunlight, then what's going to happen to plant growth and what's going to happen to life on Earth? So they're actually telling us, really, and I don't think it's conceivable um, for people to, to not understand what's going on because everybody was taught photosynthesis at school. And it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's taught to like, I don't know, eight or nine year olds, isn't it? Along with the water cycle. So there's no excuse for people to not understand what is being done to, to them. And as I've been saying before about natural law, if people say nothing, as far as they're concerned, that counts as consent. So they can tell the plebs about all their evil plans um, you know, in this case, you know, you've got you've got the stuff about um, reducing CO2, reducing sunlight. Um, we know you should know what's going to happen to the planet if you actually do that. So if you just keep your mouth shut, you, you've consented to uh, to being the carbon that they want to reduce. So, um, yeah, and one one of the aspects of it, I guess, is the, the biblical aspect of it that. Um, God created not just us, he created uh, everything, the, the earth, you know, the trees behind me. Um, somebody said that it looked like a screen the other day and the, the leaves don't move. You know, it's like <laughs> ridiculous. I'll just show you. No, no. It's rain. We've got rain today. There's the birch tree. Can you see the leaves? Oh, the leaf just moved there, didn't it? <laughs> Obviously. That must be the green screen as well, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, so Satan is, is extremely envious of, of God's creations and he wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy the world. He wants to destroy us. And the other thing that I would say, too, is that people that, um, that blame all of this, you know, the, 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 the Greta reset on, um, on people that read the Torah, um, they're just they're abs they're deluded they're suf they are they're also suffering from a satanic delusion you know the people that are actually behind this are not jews they're they're actually satanists people that belong to the funny hand club and they're demonically possessed um satan uses them call them useless Id useful idiots to do his work f f for him and um yeah that, that's all I want to say about that. So um, God bless.